After studying math education for nearly 10 years, I have come to the conclusion that we have failed to sufficiently educate our populace simply because we do not spend sufficient time on teaching the subject. Schools have higher priorities. Was it Alan Greenspan's lack of understanding of the mathematical concepts behind derivative swaps that allowed this country to sink into financial collapse? Is it the lack of mathematical understanding that has allowed so many people to buy overly expensive homes, to overinsure, and to overborrow? Mathematics can predict the dire consequences of these decisions. A new industry is arising to replace or supplement the insurance industry, where the catchphrase is to protect your assets. The cost of having someone else to protect your assets may actually deplete those assets that they are so anxious to protect for you. Be careful. Comprehend your math. Tests, despite the contrary, are not designed to test what you've learned, but are designed to develop a ranking and measuring system for the schools. This is clearly evidenced by the algorithms that are used to turn raw scores into final scores. If too many students fail, the bar is lowered, 44% to pass recent New York tests. And if too many do well, the bar is raised on the assumption the test was too easy. To illustrate the meaninglessness of the test, ask a child who has just passed the test to identify the following objects. Now, tell me what these two objects are. In both sets, we had a trapezoid and a hexagon. A trapezoid is a closed four-sided polygon with only two parallel sides. A hexagon is a six-sided polygon. The optimization of time spent teaching the subject and the way the test was designed resulted in the students learning information that was meaningless to them. This example gives you a window of understanding how Greenspan could understand economics, but not really understand it. I like to call this thievery at the supermarket. This is a sample of a receipt that I got from just a few purchases at my local supermarket. I can't read this receipt. Can you? Look at the one on the right. He basically bought three items. I can clearly see how much I paid for each one and have a reference for the next time I make a purchase. I even clearly see what I paid for them. The one on the left makes it very difficult for me to do, to do price comparison and makes it difficult to even check it. Do the stupor markets really think we're that stupid? Yes. As we can see, math is more than just multiplying. It's a problem solving. Does our education system fail to educate a populace to recognize fraud and deception and to ask the authorities to act appropriately? I cannot enumerate for you the number of times that stores have feigned innocence on those matters and have tried to pass the blame on to me. I can tell you the number of times that the Attorney General has proven me correct, and the number of times that a store has used my calculations when its own, with the use of a computer, cannot be justified or determined. To understand how inadequate a job we do, let us look at how we learn long multiplication and the placement of the decimal point, the essence of elementary school education. We learn what I call accounting, where we follow a well-defined procedure which allows us to get quick and accurate results. Let us follow the example. I'll give you a few seconds to look at what's done. Each column represents another step in the process. What I'd like you to do is try to explain each step that you do. Let us list what you have to know in order to understand what you are doing. There are eight steps. We have to know our addition and multiplication facts, long addition, 
We have to understand the commutative and associative rules, as illustrated by the six examples. We have to understand expanded number notation. We have to understand the distributive rule, which we use several times. We have to understand exponents. We have to understand fractions. And finally, we have to understand decimals. This is the key to the whole presentation to explain why we do things in math. This page may be a little bit complicated at first because many people have not been through this step. But once you master it, you master math. We basically show that it's the relationship between decimals and fractions that explain the eighth rule, where we place the decimal point. The beauty of mathematics is also illustrated that we can take different approaches to the problem and still get the same answer. So here, instead of using decimals, we use fractions, two and a half instead of 2.5. And lo and behold, the rules are consistent and we get the same answer both ways. This list encompasses nearly all that we learned about computational math through at least the fourth grade. Long multiplication justifies the reason for learning this and helps us organize these topics now that we see a purpose. This lays the foundations for learning algebra. Though all schools cover these topics, not all integrate them into a well-structured organization. Without the connection, we have failed to teach comprehension of the topic. Schools need less money and technology to become better and affordable. So what have we learned from this? We learned more time needs to be dedicated to learning and practice. Teachers need a more rigorous workshop to enhance what they know. Calculators must be abandoned for use on tests. A very different testing structure is needed. Failure must be used more effectively. Schools must change their priorities.